Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I have my May wrap up for you. So this is going to be every book I read in May. I didn't do a mid-month wrap up this month. So let's just get right into it. So the first book I read this month was Stay by Serena Bowen and Al Kennedy. And this was the last Serena Bowen and Al Kennedy book that I had not read yet. And I'd been kind of putting it off because I really, really love their books and I just like didn't want to not have one to read I guess and I finally decided I just wanted to finish off the series I am hoping that they're gonna write more books for this series because there's only two and the end kind of did hint at a potential other couple that could sort of come out in another book but I know this book came out I think in like 2017 and they haven't written another one so maybe they can do that I don't know if they're gonna do that I hope they do because I did sort of have an interest in like what they hinted at towards the end. This series is actually a spin-off of the Him series. So if you've read Wes and Jamie's book, you'll know the characters, at least the first character in the Wags series for the first book. So this is the second book. And they are hockey romances. They're very kind of similar to Off Campus with the exception that they are not college. The first one, the guy is dating a girl in college, so it does sort of have that college vibe. This one, they're both adults, the guy is on the hockey team, he's recently divorced, and he is using this sort of like virtual assistant company to help him out a lot with his newfound singleness, I guess. So he'll like send a message to this company and be like, hey, can you, you know, buy all of these things at the grocery store or whatever and like bring them to him and they'll just go find whatever he's looking for and deliver it to him. And this girl has started this company with her husband. She's now divorced him, but they're still partners in the company. And all of their sort of like really high profile clients get sent directly to her or her ex. So she has been dealing with this guy's, the hockey player's sort of requests the whole time he's been a customer of theirs. But they have like an anonymous sort of policy with their company. And as the owner, she could look him up, but she kind of doesn't really want to because she's worried it's not going to be who she thinks it is. She has a feeling it's this hockey player that she's had a crush on, but she's not really sure. And so she doesn't want to kind of like ruin the illusion. So for a long time, she doesn't look up who it is and she just keeps like doing her job basically and not worrying about who he is. But obviously it gets to a point where he actually has to get her to go deliver something to his apartment and she obviously finds out who he is and these books are just really really cute I love the entire him and wag series like I said I love everything Al Kennedy and Serena Bowen write together their books are so good I fly through them so quickly and this one was no different I think I gave this one four and a half stars because it definitely wasn't like my all-time favorite one but it was still really really good Next, I read The Sinner's Duet by Sophie Lark. The first one is There Are No Saints, and this one is, I feel like everybody knows, this one's a serial killer romance. It's not as crazy as it sounds, I feel like. I feel like that just sounds like it's going to be, like, absolutely insane, and, like, it is a little out there, but it was a lot more normal than I was expecting. I really loved this first one. I thought it was really well done, especially for what it is, and I gave it five stars. Really, really loved it. The second one is There Is No Devil, and this one I didn't love as much. I gave this one three stars. Honestly, I felt like the first one was just, like, so intense. Like, you were kind of constantly wondering what was going to happen with this guy because there was, like, this sort of looming... I don't want to say, like, fight, but, like, looming meeting between two people that you were, like, kind of waiting for, like, this, like, showdown between them. And... They leave you in the first book obviously still waiting for that and that's like to be expected because it's two books but I found the second book was just like entirely unnecessary this meeting that they're sort of hinting at doesn't happen until the end of the book the whole first part of the book was really weird to me it was just like a super chill normal like they were just like getting to know each other and I was like I already read a whole book about them I'm kind of past this point and so I didn't love this one as much as the first one and like I said I felt like we had to wait too long for that moment that we were kind of waiting for and even once we finally got it I felt like it was a little underwhelming so I didn't love the second one as much like I said I gave it three stars it was good but like it wasn't I don't think it lived up to the first one for sure next was Always Only You by Chloe Lies. Lise I always know I'm saying this name wrong and I have no idea how to say it and it's not even that many letters but 
This is the second book in the Bergman Brothers series. This one follows a hockey player, which you know is right up my alley. I was super, super excited for this one. And this one actually, like, hit me harder than I was expecting. Like, I had a hard time finishing this book, not gonna lie. I gave this one four and a half stars. I really, really loved it. The basic premise of the story is that this girl works for this hockey team and she's like the social media manager I guess so she is always at the games taking pictures of the guys or like in the locker room getting pictures and stuff for them to post on social media and so she's like working with them a lot and she's always around and there's this one guy on the team who's always like just kind of had his eye on her and he's just like super sweet like he is not like the typical sort of hockey player you see in romance books he is like in a Shakespeare club and he's just super quiet he doesn't like tackle people on the ice like he's very like quiet and reserved and just like goes out and plays and then just like goes home like he's so chill he's so wholesome he's just like so ridiculously cute and he has had this thing for this girl like the entire time but they have this policy that they can't date the staff so he doesn't say anything about it he doesn't want to ruin it but it ends up getting to a point where he finds out she's thinking of leaving to go back to school and he's kind of like okay like now's my my chance to like shoot my shot kind of thing but he's scared he's gonna scare her off and then they're not gonna be friends anymore because they sort of grow this I would say this is sort of like it grows into a best friends to lovers because they're really like best friends for the first part when they're not able to date and it's just really really cute like I said I really love this one the girl in this book is also autistic so there is I feel like a lot of Chloe's books have some kind of rep in them this one she's autistic and she also has I believe it's arthritis she walks with a cane for part of the book and so she has that going on as well um, it was just really good like I said he's really really sweet the two of them together were really cute and it was just a really sweet little book next was bad girl reputation by L Kennedy which obviously was an arc this comes out in October it's the second book in the good girl complex series I think it's called the Avalon Bay series is like the official name and this one I was excited for because Good Girl Complex had everything that I like on paper. It had the small town, it was like enemies to lovers, like it had all the things that I look for in a book. It was college, it was right up my alley, but I just didn't vibe with how the story was told. And so I was excited to see like what else Elle Kennedy was going to do sort of in that universe that I already knew I liked. This one did have a very similar vibe to Good Girl Complex. I will say the major difference is obviously the trope because Good Girl Complex is more good girl bad boy and this is like bad boy bad girl which I thought was interesting. I've never read a book I don't think that really falls into that trope where they're both kind of like hardcore partiers and things like that and this one follows obviously the brother from the first book Evan who is Cooper's twin from the first book and Jen and the two of them were kind of like best friends when they were in high school they were always out getting into trouble with each other and one day she just sort of decides she's had enough and she decides she's moving away and she just leaves and doesn't even like say bye to him or anything and she moves away and kind of is just like I'm gonna go like find myself and figure out what it is I want to do and all these things so she moves away but now we are sort of fast forwarding a year and her mom has died and so she comes back to the town for her mom's funeral and her dad asks her to stay to help with the business for a little bit before she goes back to the town that she moved to and she's like fine I'll stay help you get everything in order but I'm not staying permanently like I do plan on leaving and he's like no that's fine like I just need you until I can find someone to hire for this job so she stays for a little while and obviously Evan is around because he still lives in the town and they kind of are still like part of the same friend group so they're kind of forced to be around each other a lot and Evan is just like kind of still pining for her I guess he doesn't understand why she left or why she didn't want him and I did like this one quite a bit more than Good Girl Complex I will say that I like I said I love the small town like setting of this I love like the coastal beach it's very to me it reminds me a lot of Outer Banks like the TV show and I love that like whole vibe so that's like right up my alley I always recommend this one when people say they like Outer Banks. I'm always like this series like just gives me so many of those vibes. 
and so I really like that aspect of it and like I said it's really cute like the best friends sort of aspect to see and like how they were both partiers and sort of watching them grow up was cool I feel like a lot of times in new adult books they don't really have that sort of arc which you would think they would because of the age group that falls into but I really liked how that was done in this book so like I said did enjoy it I gave this one I believe three and a half stars because I did like it. Not a new all-time fave. For me, this still doesn't trump off-campus, but I don't think much will trump off-campus for me, so those are still my number ones. Next, I'm not going to go too in-depth with these because I'm going to do a whole video on this series, but I read the entire Devil's Night series by Penelope Douglas this month, and I will say this series was kind of exactly what I expected, but also nothing like I expected at the same time. I had heard that everyone hated Corrupt and loved all the other books, and I was the opposite. I loved Corrupt, like could not stop thinking about it, read it, thought it was great, like honestly probably should have stopped there. And then I read the rest of the series and they were like good, but I find Penelope Douglas does this a lot in her books and I don't know if this is just me, but I find she almost like teases her characters in a way that makes them seem a lot like scarier or crazier than they actually end up being. Where she's like, oh yeah, like Damon's like this like crazy dude that's gonna do all these crazy things and I'm thinking like Denna Vipers level crazy I'm like okay dude's gonna be nuts and then like we got to his book and I was kind of like that's it like he seems like pretty normal to me maybe I'm just like desensitized to everything I don't know but I find a lot of her books they like really hype up a character as like really dark and creepy and whatever and then they just end up not being that and I find that kind of lets me down I found some of the books in the series were way, way, way too long, which you can tell just by looking at them. There's like no reason a romance book should ever be as long as some of these books are. But like I said, I'm going to do a whole video on that, so that should be coming soon. So that is everything that I read this month. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. I do new book videos every single week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.